hello, hello. I am finally filming this video. I actually can't believe I haven't filmed this video before. It's been on my list for so long. I'm going to be talking about my favorite nonfiction that will help you change your life, change your perspective, open your mind, etc. I've listened to most of these on Audible and that is honestly my favorite thing. I love to listen to a nonfiction on Audible. It's basically like listening to a podcast and I'm so grateful that Audible are sponsoring this video. So thank you so much to them. They offer an incredible selection of audiobooks, podcasts and original across every genre. I have been using Audible for years now. I absolutely adore them and I've listened to so many great titles on there and I'm actually currently listening to The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. This is her highly anticipated memoir. I'm absolutely loving it. I adore Britney Spears so I'm really loving getting her insight on her life. Yeah she's just really inspirational to me so I'm really loving that. So as an Audible member you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalogue. This includes their latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get access to a growing selection of included audiobooks. Audible originals and podcasts and you can download the included titles all you want. This included selection of titles just makes the membership even more valuable and it gives the members a chance to discover new favorites and formats and like I said Audible selection is truly amazing. They have titles in every genre so obviously celebrity memoirs, mysteries, thrillers, romance, motivation, business and so much more. The Audible app makes it so easy to listen anywhere anytime so you can listen while traveling, while working out, while doing chores, walking, you decide. So new members can get a free trial of Audible by going to audible.com slash books with Chloe or texting books with Chloe to 500 500. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's just get into it. The first recommendation, Everything I Know About Love by, oh my god, I was gonna say Dolly Parton. Dolly Alderton. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I adore it. I think about it all the time. It's helped me so much. Honestly, I need to reread it. I listened to it on Audible. I just have the best memories going on my walk. I think I even vlogged it. Well, I was going on my walk listening to this book and I was just loving life. And that was such a highlight in my life because this book is funny, heartfelt, raw. It just has so much to love. This is everything you know about parties, dates, friends, jobs, life love. So Dolly Alderton basically talks about her journey through her 20s, dating, friendships, all of that. So it's super relatable to someone who was in their 20s, but also I'm sure it would be relatable even in your 30s, 40s. I think almost everyone can gain something from this book. It's just... I also just love how much Dolly Alderton talks about the value of her female friendships because sometimes that is overlooked, especially when you're in your 20s and 30s and searching for romantic love. People can neglect their friendships, but obviously friendships are so beautiful. And one of my favorite quotes from this book, nearly everything I know about love I've learned in my long-term friendships with women. This is honestly such a good gift to give to anyone in their 20s if they haven't read it. It's just so nice to feel so seen and understood and be reassured that you can be messy and not have everything together in your 20s and 30s and life is just messy you know but the fact that it's also really funny makes the reading experience super enjoyable highly recommend the audiobook because it's narrated by dolly alderton herself but yeah this definitely changed my life and i adore it okay the next book that changed my life word slut by amanda montel once again listen to this on audible i love this book it's basically a feminist guide to taking back the english language so it really highlights how gendered language is and how language shapes us and i am really fascinated by language and the power of words and the words that we use colloquially and every day and how much that can affect societal views on gender. So this book is a great analysis of that. Amanda Montel is a feminist linguist. So she deconstructs language from insults, cursing, gossip and catcalling to grammar and punctuation patterns to reveal the ways it has been used for centuries to keep women and other marginalized genders from power. Ever wonder why so many people are annoyed when women speak with vocal fry or use like as filler? I felt so seen when I read the section on why people hate like so much because I say like a lot and I do try to limit it but people can definitely take me less seriously slash think of me as dumb when I use like a lot. Anyway it's just really interesting and there's also humor throughout so it's like a really enjoyable read. I love it. Highly recommend it obviously. Please read it. Banger after banger obviously. So we have Attached by Dr. Adam Levine and Rachel S.F. Hiller. Thank you to them. I adore this book so much and it 100% changed my life. I'm going to stop saying that because that's getting annoying, but it really did. Like, I can't explain. My whole mindset shifted after reading this book. I did so much reflection on past relationships and my life and I was like, oh, 
how it all makes sense. And it was so satisfying. So basically, if you don't know, you can have different relationship attachment styles. So this book talks about anxious, avoidant, and secure attachment styles. So in the beginning, there's a quiz that you can fill out to see which attachment style you have. And this book mainly focuses on romantic relationships, but I feel like this can also apply to other relationships in your life. And understanding attachment theory is really... It gives you so much clarity in so many different situations and it also helps you understand yourself better and why you might act certain ways in relationships and if you want to make changes this book helps you in that way too it's just amazing like i highly recommend it so good read it now i have to talk about why i'm no longer talking to white people about race this book discusses race relations in britain specifically it explores everything from eradicated black history to the inextricable link between class and race I reference this quote a lot because some people don't get it. <laughs> this is the difference between racism and prejudice. There is an unattributed definition of racism that defines it as prejudice plus power. Those disadvantaged by racism can suddenly be cruel, vindictive, and prejudiced. Everyone has the capacity to be nasty to other people, to judge them before they get to know them. But there simply aren't enough black people in positions of power to enact racism against white people on the kind of grand scale it currently operates at against black people. Are black people overrepresented in the places and spaces where prejudice could really take effect? The answer is almost always no. Please read this book, it's amazing and so important. Yeah, so it discusses white privilege, white supremacy, feminism, race and class, like I said. It's just amazing. Honest, eye-opening, yeah. Still Alive by Safta Ahmed. This is actually non-fiction in graphic novel form. So it's really cool and it's basically notes from Australia's immigration detention system. And basically this is filled with stories from the people detained in Sydney's Villawood Immigration Detention Centre from 2011. So it really reveals the reality of what it's like there. So it's definitely a hard read but obviously super important and I honestly think this should be required reading for all Australian schools. But it also highlights the power of art and it's honestly so beautiful. I always reference this one page because... I am a horror girly. I love horror and I've gotten asked so many times, why do you love horror so much? I've even received judgment for loving horror. And I've also encountered some people who just discount horror as a genre. They just think it's stupid. And I'm like, there's so much value in horror. So I like to read out this bit. Basically, this person draws horror art and their parents are like, um, shouldn't you draw something a bit nicer to look at? What will people think? Some argue this stuff will bring more negativity into your life, when in fact, horror aestheticizes fear and anxiety in such a way as to transform them from sources of dread into vehicles of fascination and enchantment. Rather than bring the darkness, horror releases it. I absolutely adore this. Highly recommend it to everyone. I remember when I first started recommending it, it was hard to find, but thankfully it's more widely distributed. So hopefully I'll have a link in my description, but yes, please read it. It's amazing. Staying on the theme of Australian nonfiction, Growing Up Aboriginal in Australia is a must read, especially for Australians. This is such an important read, especially because in school we're not really taught what it's like to live as an Aboriginal in Australia. And obviously there's a lot of racism that I wasn't really aware of growing up. And there's also so much Indigenous history that we aren't taught at school. So it's just super important. And basically this is an anthology. So it's comprised of many different Aboriginal voices. One of my favorite quotes. P.S. I truly love every square inch of Australia. I look forward to when we realize that this country is our giver of life and will survive long after we have passed on. Maybe then we will each choose a life similar to that of our ancestors. One of leaving soft footprints and a light touch on this landscape and with a kindness for each other. Okay, now I need to talk about Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This was such a powerful story. Basically, Chanel Miller was the survivor of the Stanford SA case, which was a really famous case. And she tells her story, her experience going through such a horrific event, and also what it was like with the media and all the victim blaming she received. It exposes a patriarchal culture biased to protect perpetrators, a criminal justice system designed to fail the most vulnerable, and ultimately shines with the courage required to move through suffering and live a full and beautiful life. I am just so inspired by Chanel Miller. She has obviously gone through so much and she remains hopeful. I felt super inspired reading this. One of my favorite quotes is the one on the back. To girls everywhere, I am with you. On nights when you feel alone, I am with you. When people doubt you or dismiss you, I am with you. 
I fought every day for you, so never stop fighting, I believe you. She is a great example of turning pain into power. I just adored it. This is just a must read. Another must read, Feminism is for Everybody, Passionate Politics by Bell Hooks. This is definitely for everybody. It's a great place to start if you're new to feminism and want to learn more about it, or even if you are well versed in it and you know, just everyone can gain something from this read. It obviously talks about feminism, gender, sexuality, society, and it was actually written in 2000. And I read it last year, I think. I listened to it on Audible. And it's kind of scary how it's still so relevant today. Like, we have made progress, but also... Anyway, <laughs> this is also a really good book I would recommend to men who are hesitant on feminism because some people that I've talked to have said like, oh, you know, isn't feminism just like women hating men? <laughs> this is a quote from the book. Simply put, feminism is a movement to end sexism, sexist exploitation and oppression. I like this definition because it does not imply that men were the enemy. The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy is incredible. This is a working autobiography. So Deborah Levy talks about all different aspects of life, love, grief, being a woman. A quote that has always stuck with me. To separate love from life is to live a risk-free life. What's the point of that sort of life? Every time I want to give up because I'm like, it's scary to be vulnerable and get your heart broken. I think of this quote and I'm reminded we need to take risks. That's what life's about. And I just adore this book so much. It's really quick to read as well, under 200 pages. And actually this is a reminder that I need to read Deborah Levy's other books because I own them. And I just haven't read them yet, but loved this one. Okay, lastly, Conversations on Love. This is edited by Natasha Lunn, and basically she talks to lots of different people about their perspective on love. And one of my favorite things about this is the fact that it doesn't just focus on romantic love. It shows how love is in so many different places in our lives. So lovers, strangers, parents, friends, endings, beginnings. So all forms of love and lots of amazing insights that kind of blew my mind when I was reading them and helped me in understanding love more. And I think there's even a quote that says, yes, page one. It seems strange to me how we expect so much from love and yet devote so little time to understanding it. So reading about love is one of my favorite things obviously fiction but also non-fiction so I adored this and if you have any other recommendations please let me know that's actually the final book that I have to recommend so yes if you have any other non-fiction recs for me please leave them below I'm always looking for more so yeah I hope some of you can pick up one or a few or all of these books and hopefully gain something from them and have your life changed and yeah there's so much power in reading enriching the mind so thankful to all of these authors and people who have contributed. I'm thankful to Audible for sponsoring this video. Don't forget that new members can get a free trial of Audible by going to audible.com slash books with Chloe or texting books with Chloe to 500 500. If you're looking for more content for me, I have a Patreon where I upload extra content like extra vlogs. We do a monthly book club. We do live shows and so much more. That's always linked below. I also have my socials linked below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and your support. I hope you're all having a good day or night and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.